Uh, just a bit of introduction. I'm Tim North from Connect, and um, here to talk to you today, today about payments and, and how they affect the CX process. Um, I um, first of all, a bit of introduction. My background: uh, been in contact sector technology for for over 20 years uh, on both sides of the, the the fence from a vendor perspective, um, and also from a client perspective in acquiring technology and changing their technology. Um, so I want to impart some of that knowledge on you today and hopefully help you with some ideas on the uh, technology um, that, that's available for PCI and the, and the handling process. Uh, as I mentioned, I call myself a poacher and a gamekeeper. Uh, so coming from both sides of the, of the market, but I represent Connect who have very strong focus on contact centers, unified communications and network services. Um, and we've been around for, for, for a fair amount of time, a lot of uh, blue chip customers um, that we provide such solutions for. So what's the experience? Well, what we find a lot is in, and this is people issuing RFPs and, and when I'm writing them for, for clients is that they, they don't appear to have much of a handle on how they want to approach PCI. There's a lot of assumptions that pause and resume um, is, the, is the right thing to do. That's what they've always done. Uh, and there's general, generally not a, a, a desire or a move to move away from pause and resume. Um, but the thing is that what they say to us, and this is, this is our wheel of, uh, of why we think um, clients change their technology and what they look at when they are, and customer experience and compliance and security of what, 40% of the, of the requirement would say that, possibly even more uh, part of the, of the requirement. So, so the process and the collecting payments as part of a customer service process and as part of your security is absolutely important. So I think there's a, there's, maybe there's a gap and I'd like to partake some of my knowledge um, and hopefully fill that gap. Um, what's rarely discussed though is there's an assumption that customers like it, that this is the way we do it, and this is how they, how they like it. That's definitely an assumption. I think that's been challenged this year but, and last year. We'll come on to that later. But what proof do they have that actually pause and resume technically works? Well, that's a question I have. I, I ask my technical guys it, and they say, well, actually, mm, not sure we can actually prove that, and we know sometimes it doesn't work use some speech analytics tool, for example, you can look at redaction of data and you definitely do get hits. Um, so clearly it, it doesn't always work. Um, a big one now is the agent and the customer, are they in a private space? Um, you know, do they really want to speak their, their, their data? Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big challenge at the moment. Um, what organized don't look at as much is, is try and balance the cost of a breach. And especially now, as you really, you're talking GDPR, which has got probably stronger um, penalties. Um, and that's definitely part of it. It's customer data. Uh, the other one is what's the cost of auditing and providing compliance? Um, so there's 388 controls. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of testing and there's a lot of, thing, a lot of moving parts. Um, so what's changed? Well, let's face it, everyone's working from home. Um, and, you know, most agents, I'll say, work from home. It's not the case. Um, but your customer knows it. Um, that's, like, that's, that's the difference. Whereas you could have had agents working from home before, and they might not have known it, but they know it's happening now. They are know that they are calling somebody that is sat at home and they're handing over their credit card information. That is changing people's mindsets. No question about it. Spoke to one large utility um, yesterday, who, who said that we struggled all the way through. We do not have, know how to deal with this problem. Um, and the only solution we've got to the problem is to actually have agents in the, in, back in the contact center. Um, so the other thing to consider here, call centers don't exactly pay agents the, the highest amount. I mean, they're not the greatest paid workers and they are usually in a home which is multiple people in that environment. So that's another consideration. 
Um, how can you ensure that every agent taking the payments is in a secure position? And that is very difficult. Even before people started going home, working from home, that was, that was still a bit of an issue, um, although you could control it. Um, and security is now much more on customers' mind. I, I speak to my partners there, and she makes a payment. She turns around to me and says, I've just handed somebody my card data. How do I know? I, I, this is worrying me. Uh, and that's, that's becoming more and more a common thought from people. So what are your considerations? Well, first of all, customer experience. I, I know it's so important. Um, so we've got to balance that off. Uh, but customer experience is about making it easy uh, for the customer um, and minimizing demand on their time. Um, agent handling time is important and the, this can, the solution you have can impact that. But also the transaction rate, the error handling, how you impact uh, your financial objectives. That, that's a consideration you need to think about. Also the cost of auditing and compliance, the difference between completing some forms and doing 388 controls, um, and the cost of a breach. Um, the words up there are chosen, were given to me by a, um, a PCI compliance officer, uh, and they picked them out for me. They said, look, this is, this is, these are the words from the, from the guidelines. Must happen automatically, universally, consistently, and in a non-discretionary way without manual intervention. Manual intervention, I'm going to repeat that, without manual intervention. So it's, those, those are the guiding principles we need to think about when we're considering the solutions. And the solutions we're going to talk to you about today, uh, pause and resume, do it in IVR, a call migration, a wholesale migration of your calls, or what we call network-based hashing, the best description I've got for it, which is passive monitoring, really. And uh, that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So first of all, pause and resume. Uh, you, first of all, pay, it's got to be foolproof integration and it's got to be automatic. Back to those words we just talked about, it's got to be automatic. Um, it only helps with compliance with the recorder. It doesn't help any other systems. So that has minimum impact on your compliance cost of, to get compliance and your risks of being compliant. Um, the agent still has possession of the call, uh, caller's card data, and it's in their environment. I'm going back to an older, older survey here, but I thought it was a good one. I wanted to pull up on from Verizon and their data breach investigation report. 50% of fraud was by insiders, and 20% of the overall fraud was a misuse event. And that's simply somebody who has access to the card data in a call center. So. You know, it happens in the call center. Um, so you, this, you've got to be considerate about this. While it's a consistent customer experience, and it is a consistent customer experience because that's the way they've always done it, um, it's definitely not the most secure. Um, and, it, and it's not the most secure for, for you as an organization and your customers. You can use IVR. Um, that's definitely an option. We get, we get asked for this. Um, it's it, if it's automated, it could be an option that could go in quite quickly now. Um, if you put off your calls and transfer them off, but that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about where an agent is involved in a process and they move the call, transfer the call into an IVR with the customer, and there is a wall between them. Um, it's a conversation breaker. Um, so your agent's selling, getting pains, placing debt, or whatever it is, they've got to go off to a system. The agent can't monitor what's going on in the IVR it is a closed box. Um, and you've got to wait for the customer to come back. So it breaks that conversation. Um, it, it has an impact on time. Consider that it definitely has an impact on time. And you've got to think about the workflow that you need to make sure that works. The, um, the, the next alternative is what I call a migration version. Effectively, you're doing it in the network, Using PCR PAL, for example, um, very popular last year during COVID when the people needed to act quickly. Um, so you can route your calls from the PSDN into the PCR PAL cloud, and then you've got to move it out to your cloud and out to your contact center. So by taking your calls through there, you, you're taking, you're able to do the hashing and to take out 
those transactions and take your contact center out and your agents out of this of this loop. Um, so it, it achieves a lot for you. Uh, but it just means somebody's got to provision that with lots of telephony server, et cetera, licensing, bandwidth, and things like that. So you've got to think about that. You're moving wholesale. And it's pretty simple. You know, if you can identify which calls are going to be out of payment, you can just divert those calls. In general, most clients, it means you've got to move, divert them all. Um, so it, it's definitely an option. Um, our preferred option, and, um, and what we would normally lead with, is our passive monitoring. So what this means is that we provide a SIP service into the contact center with the contact center application or not. Um, but it doesn't matter. But the SIP, in the SIP service, there is some intelligence. And every call that comes through, it communicates with PCI Pulse Cloud. And the intelligence in that network um, is, is able to keep that communication going, let PCI Pulse know that we're dealing with a transaction. And when a card screen, a payment screen is opened, it sends that messages to our intelligence in our network and switches the media across. So it's only at the point that there's actually a transaction actually taking place does anything happen. It's completely seamless to the agent, to, to the customer, and the customer has to put their, their digits in the phone and, and it's done. And they, they know this. nobody's listened to them. Um, so, and they know it's going into a system. It's not going to an agent that's working from the home. So it's, it's definitely the way we see this going. And the great thing about it as well is it's only using concurrent licensing for a very short period of time. Um, so that's our final option. So just to sum up, um, the different approaches, pause and resume. I, I've not made this too scientific. I've just used some simple grammar uh, in this. So pause and resume, customer experience, it's good, but it's declining. And the reason it's declining is that People still having to speak, they're, they're realizing now they do not want to speak their card details. They know it's, it's not as secure um, as, it, as it was. It's not the best. So it's definitely declining from a customer experience, but it has always been a good experience. Cost to implement, it, it's good. You have to do some integration. You've probably already got it. Um, so it's not a huge cost to do that. <laughs> Does it allow you to sleep at night? I, I won't be sleeping much at night. Um, I, I don't believe it's the most secure solution. Um, I think we've covered that earlier on. Cost of that compliance of doing the 388 controls, it's bad because it's not going to really help you with reducing any of the burden. So the average, um, so it's an average from a total cost of ownership point of view. Um, so what I'm saying there is it's pretty low on, you know, on, on coverage and it's average on cost. Um, it's the benchmark what most organizations are doing today. So if, if you add IVR, and I'm saying here from a, a cloud deployment perspective, because if you've got technology on site and you're going to add an IVR to that, that is going to be much more expensive. But I'm talking now as a cloud solution. From a customer experience point of view, it's bad. It's not good. It's not a good experience. Um, the cost to implement, it's fairly average. You've got to do a bit of work. You've got to transfer calls off, et cetera. You know, there's a bit of cost in there. Um, is it secure? It should be. You know, if it's going off to a secure uh, effectively, you, you're effectively outsourcing it. You're passing it on to a, to an IVR. So sleep at night, you should be able to sleep at night. Uh, cost of compliance should be pretty good because it's taking the calls out of your environment. So TCO is pretty good. Um, the trouble is that it's good, but it's bad from customer experience. So it depends what your priorities are. To me, I'm on customer experience side. The net migration. Um, from a customer experience point of view, um, put it down as average because the customer has got to change what they've been doing. They're not speaking it, they're typing it. It's average because they've got to change something, but it's on the up because it's changing it to something that I, find, I think you'll find that they agree with, that they agree with it's a good approach. The cost to implement, it, it requires technology routing wholesale calls about. So I'm putting it down as fairly bad for cost to implement, um, the, the, the cost of it in, in its entirety. Um, good from a sleep at night point of view. Cost of compliance, good. Um, so total cost of our, uh, total cost of ownership, average. The passive monitoring, again, it's average on the up. It's the same process that the agent, the customer has. So you know it's going to be the same. Um, cost to implement, I, I put it down as average um, because this is an assumption that you have the SIP from your SIP provider provides it because it, it's a simple application. 
to put in. It should be there, should be available. There's just some configuration, you know, link up PCI PAL to your payment screens, etc. So there's a little bit of work to do there, but not a lot. So cost of internet is actually pretty good. I'm putting it on average though. Sleep at night, definitely good. Cost of compliance, very good. Um, same as the others. Um, the total cost of average, I'm doing average to good overall um, because it's, it's nudging it on the network migration. So in, in total summary, if you want to give your customer a bad experience, you move to IVR, but you're going to save yourself some money. If you want to be, um, if you're not too worried about security too much, it doesn't impact you too much, then pause and resume is probably going to be your, your lowest cost. Um, and potentially, you, you know, if customer experience isn't, it isn't that bad at the moment, it's still, as I was saying, it's, it's declining, but it's still there. But if you, to, for us, if you want the actual best customer experience, the, the, the lowest risk, um, and the one of the best, second best um, total cost of ownership, then the passive monitoring is the way to go.